Chapter 6 The Open and the Shut Door Sabbath, March 24, 1849, we had a sweet and very interesting meeting with the brethren at Topson, Maine. The Holy Ghost was poured out upon us, and I was taken off in the Spirit to the city of the living God. Then I was shown that the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ relating to the shut door could not be separated, and that the time for the commandments of God to shine out with all their importance, and for God's people to be tried on the Sabbath truth, was when the door was opened in the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary, where the ark is, in which are contained the Ten Commandments. This door was not opened until the mediation of Jesus was finished in the holy place of the sanctuary in 1844. Then Jesus rose up and shut the door of the holy place, and opened the door into the most holy, and passed within the second veil where he now stands by the ark, and where the faith of Israel now reaches. I saw that Jesus had shut the door of the holy place, and no man can open it, and that he had opened the door into the most holy, and no man can shut it. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. And that since Jesus has opened the door into the most holy place, which contains the ark, the commandments have been shining out to God's people, and they are being tested on the Sabbath question. I saw that the present test on the Sabbath could not come until the mediation of Jesus in the holy place was finished, and he had passed within the second veil. Therefore, Christians who fell asleep before the door was opened into the Most Holy, when the midnight cry was finished at the seventh month, 1844, and who had not kept the true Sabbath, now rest in hope. For they had not the light and the test on the Sabbath, which we now have since that door was opened. I saw that Satan was tempting some of God's people on this point. Because so many good Christians have fallen asleep in the triumphs of faith, and have not kept the true Sabbath, they were doubting about its being a test for us now. The enemies of the present truth have been trying to open the door of the holy place that Jesus has shut, and to close the door of the most holy place, which he opened in 1844, where the ark is, containing the two tables of stone on which are written the Ten Commandments by the finger of Jehovah. Satan is now using every device in this sealing time to keep the minds of God's people from the present truth, and to cause them to waver. I saw a covering that God was drawing over His people to protect them in the time of trouble. And every soul that was decided on the truth, and was pure in heart, was to be covered with the covering of the Almighty. Satan knew this, and he was at work in mighty power to keep the minds of as many people as he possibly could, wavering and unsettled on the truth. I saw that the mysterious knocking in New York and other places was the power of Satan, and that such things would be more and more common, clothed in a religious garb, so as to lull the deceived to greater security, and to draw the minds of God's people, if possible, to those things, and cause them to doubt the teachings and power of the Holy Ghost. I saw that Satan was working through agents in a number of ways. He was at work through ministers who have rejected the truth and are given over to strong delusions to believe a lie that they might be damned. While they were preaching or praying, some would fall prostrate and helpless not by the power of the Holy Ghost, but by the power of Satan breathed upon these agents and threw them to the people. While preaching, praying, or conversing, some professed Adventists who had rejected present truth used mesmerism to gain adherence, and the people would rejoice in this influence, for they thought it was the Holy Ghost. Some even that used it were so far in the darkness and deception of the devil that they thought it was the power of God given them to exercise. They had made God altogether such an one as themselves, and had valued His power as a thing of naught. Some of these agents of Satan were affecting the bodies of some of the saints, those whom they could not deceive and draw away from the truth by a satanic influence. 
Oh, that all could get a view of it as God revealed it to me, that they might know more of the wiles of Satan and be on their guard. I saw that Satan was at work in these ways to distract, deceive, and draw away God's people just now in this sealing time. I saw some who were not standing stiffly for present truth. Their knees were trembling and their feet sliding because they were not firmly planted on the truth, and the covering of the Almighty God could not be drawn over them while they were thus trembling. Satan was trying his every art to hold them where they were until the sealing was passed, until the covering was drawn over God's people, and they left without a shelter from the burning wrath of God in the seven last plagues. God has begun to draw this covering over His people, and it will soon be drawn over all who are to have a shelter in the day of slaughter. God will work in power for His people, and Satan will be permitted to work also. I saw that the mysterious signs and wonders and false reformations would increase and spread. The reformations that were shown me were not reformations from error to truth. My accompanying angel bade me look for the travel of soul for sinners as used to be. I looked, but could not see it, for the time for their salvation is past. The writer of these words did not understand them as teaching that the time for the salvation of all sinners was past. At the very time when these things were written, she herself was laboring for the salvation of sinners, as she has been doing ever since. Her understanding of the matter, as it has been presented to her, is given in the following paragraphs, the first published in 1854 and the second in 1888. The false reformations here referred to are yet to be more fully seen. The view relates more particularly to those who have heard and rejected the light of the Advent doctrine. They are given over to strong delusions. Such will not have the travel of soul for sinners as formerly. Having rejected the Advent and being given over to the delusions of Satan, the time for their salvation is past. This does not, however, relate to those who have not heard and rejected the doctrine of the Second Advent. It is a fearful thing to treat lightly the truth which has convinced our understanding and touched our hearts. We cannot with impunity reject the warnings which God in mercy sends us. A message was sent from heaven to the world in Noah's day, and the salvation of men depended upon the manner in which they treated that message. Because they rejected the warning, the Spirit of God was withdrawn from the sinful race, and they perished in the waters of the flood. In the time of Abraham, mercy ceased to plead with the guilty inhabitants of Sodom, and all but Lot with his wife and two daughters were consumed by the fire sent down from heaven. So in the days of Christ, the Son of God declared to the unbelieving Jews of that generation, Your house is left unto you desolate. Looking down to the last days, the same infinite power declares concerning those who receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. As they reject the teachings of His word, God withdraws His spirit and leaves them to the deceptions which they love.